Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number seven from the June 2023 Pure Mathematics P2 exam. And um, this question here, this is from the LXL exam, LXL International A level. And we're told about the height of a river above a fixed point on the riverbed was monitored over a seven day period. The height of the river H in meters. So there's certain things that we have to take care of in case we need to use them. H is in meters. T days after monitoring began was given by the equation H equals the square root of 20 over 20 times in brackets 20 plus 60 minus T squared close brackets plus 17. T is between 0 and 7. We're told that H has a stationary value when T equals alpha. We got to use calculus to show that alpha satisfies this following equation. All right, so this is one of the questions where we have to show something which is important for us to know how to do. All right, so let's just um, throw you there one second. Let's deal with that now. Okay, so now um, use calculus to show that alpha satisfies this equation. We're told that h has a stationary value at t equals alpha. Now, stationary value, what does that mean? Okay, that's another important word. A stationary value is a value of zero gradient. Okay, where the gradient of this graph of this curve will be zero. This will be a some sort of a um, you know a curve. It's not quite quadratic because you have this you know t to the power of a half, and you're going to have some strange type of curve. But it will be a curve, and it will have some stationary values. Okay, and of course one of them is going to be in this re region here. It says, given that H has a station value at T equals alpha, use calculus to show that alpha satisfies this equation. So we got to, first of all, we got to find what dH dt is. Okay, so let's first of all get H ready for differentiation. We have to differentiate this. The stationary value is when dH dt is going to be equal to zero. The gradient of this graph is zero. So the gradient of this graph is given by dH dt. This is called the gradient function. When the gradient function is equal to zero, that's where you find stationary points where the gradient is zero okay where you have a turning point a stationary point is something like this where you have a turning point okay it could be a maximum could be a minimum okay so first let's get this ready for differentiation so i'm going to first rewrite this as t to the power of a half over 20 times 20 plus 6 t minus t squared plus 17 and still expanding the bracket, I'm going to have t to the power of half over 20 times 20. Well, the 20s will cancel out. So you have t to the power of half. Plus, I'm going to have t to the power of 6 over 10, which is going to 6 over 20, sorry, which is 3 over 10. And you'll have t to the power of, now remember, when you're multiplying two numbers in index form, t to the power of half times t to the power of 1, you have to add the powers from the laws of indices. 8 to the power of m times 8 to the power of n equals 8 to the power of m plus n. So you add the power, so a half plus 1 is, is going to be a half plus uh, 1 over 2 plus 2 over 2, which is 3 over 2. So this is going to be t to the power of 3 over 2 minus, and you have, again, you're going to multiply these two powers together, these two terms together, you have to add the powers. So that's um, t to the power of 1 over 2 times t to the power of 4 over 2, that's t to the power of 5 over 2. So you're going to have you're going to have 1 over 20 times t to the power of 5 over 2. And then open the bracket 17. 17 is not multiplied by any of that. Okay, so now we have got the terms ready to be differentiated. Okay, so we're going to find what dh dt is. Okay, so dh dt is when you multiply the power by the power and you take one from the power. So we're going to have a half times t to the power of negative a half. Okay, and then you're going to have um, plus 3 over 2 times 3 over 10 t to the power of 3 over 2 minus a half is a half. Take one from the power. Minus, you're going to have 5 over 2 times 1 over 20 t to the power of 3 over 2 minus 1 is 3 over 2 minus 2 over 2, which is 3 over 2. And 17 will just become 0 when you differentiate constant, it becomes 0. So let's tidy this up first a little bit. So we have dh dt is equal to, um, I can write this as 1 over t to the power of a half. And this is going to be 9 over 20 plus 9 over 
20 t to the power of positive a half and you're going to have minus and this will cancel with this it's one that's four so it's going to be minus one over um, eight okay uh, t to the power of three over two okay so that is what dh dt is in kind of like simplified now they've said when dh dt equals zero t is equal to alpha so i'm going to uh, put t as alpha so i have one over t two alpha to the power of a half plus nine over 20 um alpha to the power of a half on the numerator here minus one over eight alpha to the power of three over two equals zero so once this is equal to zero t is equal to alpha so now what i'm going to do is i want to get rid of the fractions here i want to get rid of the fractions so i look at the denominators the lcm of the denominator if you got two and 20 and eight it's going to be 40. 40 is the lowest number that these all go into and also alpha to the power of a half so i'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by 40 times alpha to the power of a half and that should get rid of all the fractions from the equation and it should hopefully look something like this so if i multiply 40 um alpha to the power of a half by the first term that's going to be um i'll just write it 40 alpha to the power of a half over 2 alpha to the power of a half plus i have 40 alpha to the power of a half times 9 over 20 alpha to the power of a half okay and minus 40 alpha to the power of a half times uh, 1 over 8 alpha to the power of a half and that's equal to 0 okay i need a bit more space here so let me just make some space okay so for this now what i can do is these will cancel out i've got 40 over 2 which is 20 plus this will cancel with this leaving with 2 2 times 9 is 18, I have 18, and alpha to the power of half times alpha, alpha to the power of half is alpha to the power of 1. And here you're going to have 8 and 40, 8 goes into 45 times, and I'll have here um, alpha to the power of, this is supposed to be 3 over 2, sorry, that's 3 over 2, that's a mistake there, let me go back and correct that. That's supposed to say 3 over 2, of course, not half. So when I have when I add these two to power, when I multiply these two terms, I have to add the powers. So I have one over two plus three over two, which is four over two, which is two. That gives you minus five alpha squared, and that's equal to zero. And I think that's what we had to show. Five alpha squared minus eight in alpha plus twenty minus twenty equals zero. Okay, so yeah, so we see that we've got everything but with the opposite sign. Okay. Um those are both positive, that's negative. So if I multiply both sides by minus 1, I'll end up with 5 alpha squared minus 18 alpha minus 20 equals 0, as required. That's what we had to show. Okay, so we got to this stage. Everything was right except for the signs. So we can multiply both sides by minus 1, and we end up with 5 alpha squared minus 18 alpha minus 20 equals 0. And then part B says, hence find the value of alpha giving your answers to three decimal places or the value of alpha giving your answer to three decimal places so obviously there's going to be two values of alpha we'll get from this equation but only one of them will be one that is within our range because alpha remember as we learned from here should be between zero and seven okay so our va value of alpha has to be between zero and seven okay so let's take this equation now they told us to give the answer to th three decimal places that means we don't we cannot solve this using factorizing that's what they told us so we can you can use completing the square you can use um the quadratic formula i think i'll use the quadratic formula here so we can say alpha is equal to minus b so it's minus minus 18 plus or minus the square root of b squared which is going to be minus 18 all squared so you can just write 18 squared if you want because minus is going to get squared b squared minus 4 times a which is 5 times c which is minus 20 and all of this is over 2a which is 2 times 5 so if you write that down that's your method mark for the quadratic formula all right so there's only one mark for this question so 
it's not so critical. Anyway, it's better for you to do it. So minus minus 18 is 18. Plus, I'll use plus first, square root of, um, plus, whoops, square root of, and you've got to have 18 squared. You don't have to worry about the minus, it's going to get squared anyway. Minus 4 times, 5 times, minus 20. Okay, and that's all over 2 times 5, which is 10. So you would get one answer, which is 9 plus root 181 over 5. So that's 9 plus root 181 over 5. And we get also another answer, which is, we put a minus between them over here. Oops. Get rid of the plus, minus instead. That gives us 9 minus, 9 minus root 181 over 5. So let's see what values they give us. The first, the second one here gives us a value of negative 0 0.891. Negative 0. Negative 0 0.891 goes on. And the first answer, which was this one, gives us 4.49072. So 4.49072. So we can say the time uh, to three decimal places is 4.49072. 9 4.491 4.491 and this is um in days okay uh, so that's going to be the value of alpha it's not t it's called it's called alpha this is alpha this is t when the gradient is zero so alpha is 4.491 to three decimal places so that's the one within our range. We don't accept this one because our range is between 0 and 7. So there's your answer to part B. Um, okay, then the next part of the question says, it says, use further calculus to prove that H is a maximum at this value of alpha. Okay, so let's take our first differential, okay, which is over here. Okay, so we have our first differential. Now, to use further calculus to prove that this is a maximum value for this uh, of h at alpha, we've got to find the second differential. So I've got to take dh dt. So I'm going to take dh dt. I'll differentiate again. So I'll write this as half t to the power of negative half plus 9 over 20 t to the power of a half minus 1 over 8 t to the power of 3 over 2. I'm going to differentiate it a second time. Find the second differential which is given the symbol d squared h dt squared. Okay, that's the second differential. That tells us about the change in the gradient function, how the gradient function is changing. So we multiply by the power. That gives you minus a half times a half, which is minus a quarter, t to the power of minus 3 over 2, plus a half times 9 over 20, which is 9 over 40, t to the power of minus a half, take one from the power, and 3 over 2 times minus 1 over 8 is going to be minus 3 over 16 times t to the power of a half. Okay, so that is called the second differential. So what we're going to do now, we're going to see what the value of the second differential is when t is equal to 4.491. So I'm going to write this in a slightly different way first to make it a bit more friendly for putting values in. So this is 4 over t to the power of 3 over 2. Now t to the power of 3 over 2 is the same as the square root of t cubed. Plus, we have 9 over 40 t to the power of a half in the denominator, because it's a negative power goes to the denominator. That's the square root of t. Minus 3 over 16 times the square root of t on the numerator. All right. So now when alpha, when t is equal to, because t is a value of alpha, 4.491, then d squared h, d t squared is equal to, so we substitute the values in. Okay, so we're going to substitute the value in. So this value, I'm going to just, to make it easier, I'm going to store it as a. So that's the stored value of a. Okay, so if I go to back to this, if I press alpha a, it should give me, Ah, give me the wrong one. I stored the wrong one. So let's go back. What did I do wrong? This is the one that I want. So I'm going to store this as A. So it's best to be careful to make sure. Let's just make sure. So alpha, this gives me. 
that's the value I need. Good. So our A is the value that we need. So now I'm going to simply just put it into this equation. So I have minus, I'll have um, 1 over 4 times, I'm going to have here the square root of t cubed, the square root of, um, I'm going to put A here, A cubed, sorry, alpha, this is A, and that's going to be cubed, okay, A to the power of 3, it's going to be that power, okay, and then we're going to have um, plus, we're going to have 9 over 40, and then we're going to have the square root of A, Okay, and then we're going to have um, minus 3 over 16. And this is going to be times the square root of, I'll put A here as well. And that gives me my answer, which is negative 0 0.317, negative 0 0.3174, dot, dot, dot. So we can see we've got to show it's the maximum, and that's exactly right. Okay, so we can say as... The second differential is less than zero. Therefore, okay, when alpha equals 4.491, okay, we have a maximum. Maximum of H. That's the maximum value of H. That's when it causes a maximum. As we know that when we um, find the second differential, we're finding how the gradient is changing. And a maximum looks like this. The turning point looks like this. So the gradient here is starting positive. It's becoming zero at the maximum, and it's then becoming negative. So as you go along, all right, the gradient is decreasing the whole time, starting from positive, ending up as negative. Positive gradient on this side, negative gradient by the time we finish. So a maximum is an area of decreasing gradient. So the rate of change of the gradient will be negative. So at the maximum, the rate of change of the gradient is equal to a negative value, so that's what we've seen here. If it came out as positive, then we will have a minimum. A minimum is where the gradient goes from negative to positive. It's increasing the whole time. The, the, the um, rate of change of the gradient is positive because the gradient is going from negative to positive. All right? That's for a minimum. Okay, so that's how we can understand that. And that's the answer to part C of this question. And that concludes this question. Question number seven from this June 2023 paper. P2, Pure Mathematics, uh, Pure 2 from Edexcel. Other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will appear over here. Other questions from the topic of, quad, of um, I guess this is to do with uh, differentiation, calculus differentiation, can be found in this playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. And the link here takes you to a video that tells you or shows you how to use my channel to find the things you might be looking for. Thank you for watching and see you soon.